What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about scaling miniatures into bigger figures. And of course a lot of you will say, oh, well I think you talked about this before. I did, but we didn't talk about the fact that you might have something that's pre-supported and you might be contemplating possibly using those pre-supports. That's not gonna work as it is. I mean, you can go into the prepare tab, you can recalculate those supports as well. And you can try to do that, that is a possibility. Although, if you look at the supporting one, it's, it's recalculated. It's going to be too light for a model of the size that you've now created, especially since we've doubled this one. And so I think you need to go back in and here, kind of like, you know, you always need to analyze and go, okay, I really do need to start this from scratch. So in all honesty, we need to kind of take the model as it is, bring it up to the scale we want, in this case, 200%. So it's about 90, 95 millimeters tall. Pretty, pretty large figure. I mean, we could go bigger, but honestly, that's ridiculous. And if you did go that large, you definitely want to hollow it. And, um, you know, we can go that route. You can definitely go the hollowing route. So in this particular instance, we're looking at making it even bigger. But if we look at it, you know, you can see 200%. You've got a good amount of detail still captured there at 300 percent you're probably going to scale out some of the details so don't necessarily like going that big on some of these models besides if i do it at 200 percent i can still do it solid i can still get away with solid material it shouldn't be much of an issue i will probably still hollow it at 200 percent though in most cases because if you can see there's a large trunk area to the character there's still a lot of big pieces of uh, material that are going to be in my opinion, too much strain, and I would prefer to hollow those areas. I'm going to I'm gonna block some of the zones and allow some of that to not be hollowed because I know that, you know, there's going to be certain areas that are just going to suction cup, like the cape, the shield, that's not a good thing. That arm on the left, I'm not worried about, or the arm on the right, rather, I'm not worried about. The arm connected to the shield is a little bit lower. I'm going to uh, make sure that's solid and chunky. His legs will be hollow all the way up. His body will be hollow all the way up, uh, pretty much, except for where the blockers might come into contact with him. Uh, this is always a pain in the butt doing this blocker stuff, especially if you're working with a lot of little detailed parts where you have to block tiny little bits to make sure that they're not hollow, but the big parts that you want to be hollow are hollow. Uh, because you don't want to create, one, resin traps, two, you don't want to create suction cups. And Lychee has the suction cup detector, which I've had mixed kind of results. It does work sometimes for me. The other day I was trying it on a model and literally just did not do anything. So I uh, just kept telling me the detection needed to be done. And I was like, well, I think I did that already. Um, so I'm not sure if it was just the model or, or whatever. I had tried it a few times on some other models and it did work. Um, to the point where he was able to tell me that I either A, I did not have any suction cups on some of the parts or where they were were so minim minim minimal and small that I wasn't really uh, concerned with what they might cause as far as suction. Now, I guess the argument could be uh, you don't want any suction at all, but minimal amounts of suction, as long as they have a way to drain out into the main body of the hollow, I think as long as that happens during some sort of the printing process, you're usually okay. You're going to wash it out. You know, you may lose a little bit of resin inside, but uh, I think that'll be okay for the most part. As we continue to do the blocking, um, you can see I'm blocking the shield there with like a large chunk. And some of the arm will get blocked there as well. But mostly really I'm just looking to aim uh, at the bottom of the arm and the top of the shield and the middle of the shield. Whereas most of the material is going to be that I don't want uh, to hollow out. And that arm as well because it's a, it's a little low. And that's going to cause a lot of suctioning for a few hundred layers. And I don't really want to mess with that. That's too much for me. So that this should make a reduction in some of that uh, suction. And of course, we do have the arm on the right. And of course, that arm is hollow. But there's going to be sections of it where I think that's going to have less exposure and peel. Um, so I think that'll be fine on that side. I'm not concerned about that. I'm going to put enough supporting underneath that arm to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Plus, we're relieving the greatest forces of suction, which are going to be from the bottom, which is the, the, the shield side with all those pockets all over the place. That's going to be really bad. The arm is fine because it's just one big open um, cavity. 
and I often find that that usually works better. Uh, I mean, I've done experiments where I put no drain holes on the prints at all, and I'm not really sure how it survived, but it did. Um, it pr even printed too. Weird. I had to put some heavy supports on that thing. Though. It was just, it was really just a test. I mean, I don't advise you do that ever. It's not a probably not a good idea. Now, um, once you go ahead and get your blocking done, we're going to pop our holes in there. And, of course, you guys know the way I do the hollowing. I do not use Lychee's uh, internal hollowing system to really carry out all the hollowing. What I'll do is I'll use it to punch the holes. Then I will export that geometry as model, as an STL, and then I'll bring that back in as a new model. And the reason I do this is for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, I don't like the way Lychee creates holes. Um, it doesn't actually punch the hole out of the material. It creates this little virtual hole, which I really don't like. Um, I really think it, it it would be better if it worked more like Chai 2 Box, where you actually just punch the hole out. Uh, and then I would actually save myself this process, and I wouldn't have to do all that and export the model. But there we are. We have a, a hollowed out model with a pretty good reduction in suction and suction cups. Um, and pretty pretty decent size, so we can now try to do this a print in place one size. I'm not going to cut them up. Uh, there's no real good place for me to sever the parts here, uh, unless I were to take them into another application and do so. And I don't want to take the time to key out uh, a character like this. It, he'll print just fine in place. Um, obviously, something this detailed, the first thing you want to do is definitely go through the island detection. That's going to be a lot. You're going to probably find hundreds of islands on characters this detailed because of number one, armor, chain mail. Uh, fur and any kind of facets that come off of that material are definitely going to be uh, big on the island side because all those are going to have little tiny details that are going to kind of pop out of the model. And in a lot of those cases, those are going to be the things that um, are reflective of, you know, that becomes an island because it's sticking out a little bit further uh, and it, it might form a little bit further down or a little bit further before a supported area does form. And, you know, there you're, you're, you have the issue of, uh, you know, where that detail either gets lost or um, you have a failure because of it. And both of those things are possible. And um, for the islands on this particular one, because there are so many, I am actually going to use the Lychee uh, find and place system, unless it tells me it can't, and then I will place it myself. But for the most part, there are so many, I'm actually tempted to use the add all support to all islands. <laughs> Which, by the way, I have the guilty... Um, pleasure of using every once in a while. It does not it does not suck as bad as some people think or say. Uh, the function actually works really well. It will support a good amount of violence. You will have to go check by hand anyway because I don't trust anything when it comes to these applications. I always go slice by slice and I will always check my islands um, as I go through the, the application and the print. Um, of each model that I do because honestly I don't want to leave anything to chance. I hate failures. Resin is expensive, especially the stuff that we use and for the most part these are usually for customers and I don't want them to screw up. Now if it's a test piece or a test print maybe I'll go crazy uh, and I might skip a step but even then I really shouldn't because I mean if it's a test that that's even more important that I follow all the rules. So forget what I just said there. Honestly, it's best that you don't skip any of the steps. Go slice by slice, do your islands, do your supporting, do your structured supporting, do your pressure supporting, add your mediums, apply heavies if you think they're necessary. On a model like this, I'm not going to. He's going to be a majority of lights with a couple mediums where I find necessary. I'll put some anchors in there. But to be honest, because he's hollow and the solid bits aren't going to be that large, he's actually going to be kind of light. He probably won't weigh very much, and he really won't have a lot of pull when it comes to the actual peel on the FEP, and so I'm not really concerned about his weight being an issue with support types. So I'm going to be using some of my um, really, really light supports, which I have a video covering a what we what, what I'm now calling the better supporting system, where essentially I'm using just clusters of my light supports on everything, and essentially I'm able to peel those supports away with very little detail uh, or damage loss at all. Um, and really just take some mild sanding in the area where the little supports were because the tips are so small, because the diameter is a decent size. It's 1.22. We're using a 0.22 tip diameter. We've actually found that a majority of the parts that we use these on, they have no resistance when you're pulling them off, simply rinsing them in alcohol or whatever your cleaner is, and then they simply tear away. 
Um, I've done some pre-supporting for some clients that have claimed the same as well with the supporting system. So one of the reasons we're calling this the better supporting system and the better supporting style is because it's simply using a bunch of ultralights and light supports essentially in place of any other um, weight of support and simply using a lot of them. Now, I guess the argument could be that, you know, using this many supports, they're bound to get clustered together. You're bound to have issues. In some areas, you are going to get where you, you call tree trunking and um, bigger chunks of supports are going to get stuck together. We usually try to go in and kind of refine that a little bit before we make the prints because to me, the most important thing is the ease of removing support. Because we do so many prints, because we're constantly removing supports, because it's constantly something we need to do, one of the things that we need to focus on mostly is how quickly we can de-support a model, how quickly we can clean and cure it and move on to the next part because we're constantly picking up and cleaning, you know, several build plates at a time. It's not one print plate, it's it's several. You know, we're, we're always working in bulk, we're always working with several pieces. Um, and so in that respect, I think that's part of it. Now you will see I'm using some mediums in there as well because there are going to be some heavy spots. So I am using some mediums. The mediums are a 0.44 diameter tip and a 1.44 diameter bar. Now they're still being placed far enough apart that there won't be too much clustering on this particular structure. And for the majority, like I said, all the detailed areas are being used with um, the ultralight and light supports. Now I'm not using my 0.15s because this is not a mini. He's actually pretty big and even though he's hollowed, I still don't want him to pancake in any spots and I don't want to lose you know, any pressure uh, fighting with the build plate. So in this particular instance, I am making sure that he is uh, going to be supported really well with the light supports. I'm going to put plenty of supports around the hands, the sword, um, the tip of the blade along the bar of the blade. And uh, I know you probably all are looking at that sword going, oh my goodness, that's a lot of supports. Yeah, I'm not even done with that. We actually have a print where we do a lightsaber. It's actually a couple lightsabers for two of the characters, and they look like they're literally sitting on beds of nails. Um, but the thing is, it just literally takes a squeeze, and they pop right out. Because the tips are nice and small, they don't really leave a lot of damage either. It's very easy to just take a piece of sandpaper and just smooth that away, and you have a really nice-looking piece um, of resin when you're done that's fully shaped and ready to go. Um, so the, the process that we use with the supporting is, is efficient. We've figured out a really good way to kind of like get this supporting style to work really well for just about everything that we do. And I'm trying to transfer it onto some of the um, products that we use with some of our artists. So if they're not pre-supported files already, um, I'll usually try to hand support them. In the case of the file we're working on here, this is actually one of the Silver Knights. This is Cripple God Foundry and I don't usually support their files. I'll usually just go through, check for islands, do my job there, um, make sure that it's going to print well, good contact on the plate, maybe add a couple minor supports on the bottom here and there wherever I feel they might be needed. And honestly, that's just my preference. That's not anything to do with the work that's done. The supporting work that they do is actually phenomenal, and I have actually uh, plugged and printed plenty of their pieces before. So I do know that their um, supporting systems work well. But what we're trying to do is kind of convert all of the prints that we do to this supporting style where we're using our tip bar and diameter and tip length system so that way I know exactly how easy it's going to be for me to break these guys free when I take them off the build plate. And I think that's, like I said, that's one of the biggest factors. And I think a lot of people complain to me about that. They really hate cleaning prints. And I think having a better support style, having a style that's going to help you support both detail and be easy to remove is super awesome. Like if you can achieve that, then great. And I feel like the supporting system that I use, the way that we support the models, it is actually a really efficient system. My, the people who buy our models love them. I personally think they look great. My artists, you know, they all say they look wonderful. So Honestly, we're getting a lot of feedback from everybody saying that the models look good the way that we're supporting them like this, and this is something that I've been testing over the last couple of months. So we're now pretty satisfied and, you know, stably to say that, like, I, I think this is a good system of supporting. Um, now, there are a couple other guys who do supporting with, with similar styles where 
you'll see a couple different bar diameters and tips and stuff like this variants and then they'll use mini supports in between I tend to actually use less mini supports now than I used to because I find that with the type of resin that I'm using the mini supports either become stringy or they bow and they'll bend and they won't really be as efficient as they could be and I don't know if this is just the type of resin or um, uh, you know maybe it's the just the, just the way that or the size of the miniature supports that I'm using they just really aren't efficient with some models so I kind of stopped using them in the sense of the you know bigger pieces or even just you know for just preserving detail I'll use them in instances where I find that there are places to like if I don't have room to place a lot of tips or if I've got a lot of bars already I will use the miniature so there's a place for them I think that that's uh, you know still appropriate but I think for the most part this system doesn't use a lot of miniatures unless there's no room for a larger support the whole purpose of this is to place enough pressure using the light support tips everywhere so the model is supported lightly but thoroughly so it's essentially caged in a light support um, nest where it prints off the build plate with very little damage and is extremely easy to remove so hopefully this system works well um, we're going to do a couple videos on it that I'm going to try to publish out this week so do keep an eye out for all that stuff and uh, again we really appreciate you guys watching all these videos I, I appreciate all the new subscribers that we've had um, I know the uh, the channel is still building up momentum so we do appreciate all the interactions the feedback everything's been great I hope you guys are getting something out of these videos I hope that um, y'all are learning some things about the 3d printing and stuff like that too so uh, it's uh, it's definitely been fun for me doing them and uh, we're going to keep making them as long as we can anyway guys that's it for this one thanks for watching see you all real soon